Hello and welcome to the final teardown of this series. Until now we looked at the tubes responsible for rectifying the AC into DC, the tubes responsible for amplifying the radio signal and then detecting it and amplifying the audio signal and the last thing to do is look at this tube, the magic eye or with a less fancy name the tuning indicator. In this case an EM80 vacuum tube. So if you're curious to see how this tube works, what's its purpose, how this sort of tube evolved over time, and in particular how this one is built, then keep watching. But where does the term magic eye come from? Well, the easiest way of explaining this is by showing you a very early type of magic eye tube. This is the EM1 that I got here still a functional tube, although most of the paint is missing, and I, ju I just want to show you what this looks like when it's turned on. So I will be supplying it, and as you can see the filament is turning on, so the bright orange is coming from the filament. But once the tube has heated up, you see this green cross appearing. And basically this is how the vacuum tube indicates how strong the input signal is. So what I'm using is this schematic over here, I'm supplying the tube with 260 volts of anode voltage and then I'm supplying it also with a signal between 0 and 5 volts. So right now I'm giving it 0 volts. Now watch what happens when I increase the signal to it. You can see that slowly the green area is increasing and increasing and increasing. And this is showing us, if it would be in a radio, that the signal is becoming stronger and stronger. So how does this tube work? Well basically you've got the triode that's amplifying your input signal and the voltage from the anode of the triode is used to concentrate and focus a beam of electrons that is being emitted from the cathode to the anode. Now in this case the anode is this funnel, the area where the visible green light is coming from. And this deflection plate, well we need to take a bit a closer look into the tube for that. So what is the purpose of such a tube? Well, as the name tuning indicator indicates, it's a device to help you tune in the radio. Basically because of your automated gain control circuit, it's very difficult to fine tune the radio station when you're listening to it, because the volume doesn't really change that much when you're very close to tuning in the station. And that's where this tube comes in. This tube will show you how strong the input signal is with an optical indication. So by using this sort of tube you can perfectly tune in your radio to have the maximum input signal. This way you will have minimal audio distortions and you can listen to your favorite station at the best possible quality. So now we can get a closer look at our EM1. We can see the anode, the final anode of the indicator tube, so the one on which this green light is being emitted from. We see the cathode in the middle, and then we see those plates put at 90 degrees on the inside, and those are the ones that connect the triode to the indicating tube. So these plates are this grid in the middle. Now if we look back at our tube, we can see that those plates, if you look on the inside, so you don't even have to take apart this tube, you can see everything through it, we can see the triode. So we can see the cathode running through the entire tube, we see the anode, and the anode is connected through these beams into the deflection plates. And then in the middle you can also see the grid. And basically this is what one of the earliest types of tuning indicating magic eye tubes looked like. But the problem with this one was that the tube is huge compared to the actual visible area. So a tube that is more efficient, so that has a much better surface area to tube ratio was created. And a good example of that is the EM80. So as always the first step is to remove the glass envelope. So let's see what happens. So I've broken through the glass and as you can see the supper coating is starting to react 
a bit faster than usually in my teardowns. This is also because with this tube the filament is quite far away from this coating, so the coating didn't end up being cooked so much as with the other tubes. Well, time to keep cutting. So on the same basic operating principle, we have the EM80 vacuum tube. Still the same thing, only this time the viewing screen is much much bigger compared to the entire tube, so it's a bit more efficient. And now if we start supplying the grid with certain voltage, we will see how this tube works. So we can see that the area covered by the green indicator is slowly increasing. And we also see one of the features that was not present in the tube I previously showed. So if you're tuning in a very weak station, you will be using this large indicative area. So the one that I'm currently playing with. Now what happens if you have a very strong station? Well then, the first indicative area starts to saturate, but then you have two other areas coming on from the sides. So by using this principle, you basically have a way of tuning in weak stations and then a way of tuning in some stronger stations. Basically this is how the EM80 vacuum tube works. You can also see the filament from the back, it's a bit bright. And another thing that can be said about this sort of tubes is that this is basically how a cathode ray tube works. You've got electrons being emitted from the cathode and they're hitting a screen covered with electroluminescent powder. And the way you're influencing the beam of electrons is using electrical fields. Just like in an oscilloscope tube. Now you may know from TV tubes, so cathode ray TV tubes, that the stream of electrons can also be influenced with magnetic fields. And what I got here is a little magnet. And watch what happens when I slowly bring it closer to our tube. We can see that the area where the electrons are hitting our display screen is moving. So our electrons are being deflected by the magnetic field, not just by the electric field. Now there's one more advance that was made in magic eye technology. The problem we still have is that the tube is not very bright. So I'm in a very dark room at the moment. I need to keep the tube under quite a lot of darkness just to be able to show you how this tube works. And that's because we can only see the light emitted by the reflection coming from this coated anode. The next best thing that you could do was just like in the TV, put the coating directly on the glass. So to have it emit a bit more brighter. A prime example of this being the EM84 or its Russian cousin the 6E3P. In this case two problems were resolved. First of all the brightness. Since the green indicative material is directly on the surface of the glass it's much brighter. And secondly contrast. You can see that the filament is way back in the tube and normally this would be covered so only this bright, the bright stripes would be visible making it a much better indicative tube. And again the same principle holds. By increasing the signal voltage you are illuminating a much bigger area of the tube. You can also see on this tube because of its high amount of usage some of this indicative screen has already turned black so normally it would be much much brighter but from over usage it has gone dark. Basically these are the types of tuning indicator tubes that were used. Primarily in radios to show how well you tuned in the radio station but also in certain equipment in which this was used as a cheaper way of indicating that you had a maximum or a minimum voltage. And nowadays these, this sort of tube is also used in V-meters. So in circuits that show you how loud your output audio signal is. So after quite a bit of trouble I managed to cut this all the way around. Now it's time to remove the glass envelope. And now we can finally have a look at this tube. We can see we have this these stabilizing pins on the side. So these were just used to center it inside the glass. We can see that the getter has quite a weird shape, so it's not a round or 
saucer or anything like we have seen until now. It's a bit different. And this is mainly because when you are activating this, you didn't want to end up destroying the coating inside this target anode. So now it will be time to take this apart. And for that, I will be removing this front part. So to expose the filament and the triode part and everything and see exactly what's beneath it. Let's see. So now we got this shield cut off and let's see what's behind it. Well, that's not very interesting. So we can see the filament going from one side to the other of the tube. We can see what I'm guessing is the grid of the triode and also the anode of the triode. And to actually see the tube, we still need to remove this spacer. Then we should actually end up seeing properly what's inside this tube. Come on, please don't break into pieces. Come apart nicely. So as you can see, the spacer is made out of mica very good high temperature isolator which you can take apart layer by layer and finally yeah, I'm removing a bit of vacuum too but some sacrifices need to be made so now what we can see I removed the grid of the triode so yeah that, that used to be in there and if we look closer inside we can see there's another grid in there. So if you look in the datasheet of the EM80, I well, should have done that from the beginning, you can see that there are two grids inside the tube. One is for the triode part and the other one is for the indicator part. The second grid is used to increase the flux of electrons going to the target anode. Now this sort of grid was not in all tubes. So if we look at the datasheet of the EM1 that we saw earlier, we see that this second grid does not exist, but for the EM80 and the EM84, for example, it is present. So this sort of enhancement came along throughout the development process of Magic Eye Tube, so it wasn't there from the beginning. So we can see the filament in here, the cathode, one grid, second grid. So we can see that the anode of the triode part are these deflection rods. So these are the ones used to deflect the stream of electrons coming from the cathode and hitting our target anode. We can see that these two bars are only connected here and going outside. And then this plate is connected to the larger anode. So this large plate here. So quite an interesting design actually in this tube. So you have the two grids controlling the stream of electrons and then on the target anode we see these two stripes here so where the color has changed a bit since that area was never really hit by electrons everything else got a bit darker now this coating usually is made with zinc silicate or also other compounds or even phosphorus for tubes like the em84 and depending on its composition, you will get a certain color. So usually it's green, but there's different shades of green, but it can also be yellow or other colors. And well, basically there's not much more to take apart in this tube. That will be all for this EM84. And this tube is the last of this series. So I got all five tubes make up vacuum tube radio. Now the last thing to do is of course look at the radio itself. So not with these tubes but with some functional tubes. So if you're curious about that stay tuned for next time. Also hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you want to see more tubes being taken apart. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.